Thanks so much for joining us for what promises to be a fascinating discussion with Sandra Walter. She has been an ascension guide, a master gatekeeper, and a way shower. Welcome, Sandra. Oh, thank you so much, sister. It's an honor to share space with you. And you have been an interdimensional liaison for so many years, communicating with a benevolent group of celestial, extraterrestrial beings who are co-creating the ascension for humanity? Yes, exactly, exactly. I actually, my journey started in, it, it started in childhood with having contact experiences, but then Later in my journey in 99, suddenly on January 1st, 1999, I went suddenly startlingly clairaudient, claircognizant, and started receiving all these messages. And I didn't know what was going on at the time, and it was every day. So I was writing them down and sharing them, and they were all talking about this transformation of consciousness and an era of pure creativity and ascension that was going to unfold and I, I you know I just diligently wrote down the messages and shared them with friends and stuff but I really didn't understand what was going on it was just this beautiful creative time in my life so I was like well this is just a side effect of all this writing I'm doing and, and creativity and everything I'm just starting to hear my guides in a clear way and then uh, then it started getting very predictive about events and this is in 99 and I started talking about the towers falling and then we're going to rebuild humanity so in 2001 when 9-11 happened I was like I just dropped everything I was like are you kidding me this is really all going to unfold and I wasn't living in Chicago at the time so the towers coming down 9-11 was a big deal if you were in a major city <laughs> so I was like all right this is it I'm awake it was just like Every, everything got shut down. I quit my job. I left my home. I sold everything and went on and started traveling, started going on, on mission. And it, was, and it was a baptism by fire for sure. Um, but, uh, but the messages got longer and more involved. I got more attuned to my own conduit abilities. And, uh, and it, has rolled into what it is today, you know, re delivering these messages for those who were engaging with Ascension and wanted to know how and not just what's going to happen or general advice on open your heart, get into your heart, you know, kind of thing. But they started getting more and more precise. And the more that, and especially when I went to Mount Shasta in uh, early 2012, the intel got very precise. You know, something, Mount Shasta operates like a crown chakra, so you can get very attuned to your higher self and hear your higher levels very clearly if you spend time up there and have that intention and you're doing all the, all the rest of the work for ascension. And, uh, and I found it fascinating that they were able, you know, my team, which is, you know, most of, mostly just my higher levels, um, my oversoul higher levels, and masters and galactics and like all these different aspects, but uh, we started kind of merging with them and being uh, able to talk about specifically gate work and grid work for incoming energies. And I ended up being a, a spokesperson or a representative for, for that bandwidth of the light worker tribe that was consistently traveling, dealing with timelines, dealing with grid work, dealing with cosmic stargates and stuff that was coming through the sun and other stars. And, and the intel was always reflecting that kind of like, hey, on this day, and they would give, give me lists of, of cosmic events in December. And then as the year unfolded, it, would, it was like clockwork. It was crazy. Um, just just right on with uh, with the precision of that and I found it fascinating I was like wow this is this is you know a whole different part of me 
that I wasn't aware of, you know, skill wise. So my skill sets kind of expanded and got into this gatekeeper um, skill set that has been um, consistently um, really amplifying my own process as well as those that I teach and guide and inspire uh, every week. And that's been consistent every week, every week for, you know, a couple of decades just providing um, not just what comes through, but inspiration and maybe interpretations or different perspectives on the Ascension process. Opening these gateways between planet Earth and the cosmos sounds like an incredibly important part of the Ascension process for humanity. Can you talk more about that? Well, it's really the, the return to the solar cosmic Christ state that does have its, uh, its roots and its connections outside of this realm, outside of the, the realm of Gaia herself. And a lot of us tend to be very Gaia centric because that's where our focus is in the lower dimensions. You're just like Gaia, 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 Gaia. And, and as you, as you kind of level up and expand out, then you get a strong connection to um, the sun and solar beings and solar entities, different star systems, and then, then it goes galactic and then it goes kind of universal and you get into formless realms that where you can perceive the what we call the stargate flow. So there's these cosmic flows that come into galactic center and then get distributed out in order to create this transformation of this entire harmonic universe. So it was just like, wow, you know, it's just, it's really beautiful. And it's beautiful to be in that state of consciousness and, and receive that and, and receive, you know, the, the kind of how to engage with that. But I find personally that to be an aspect of the Christed state is your reunification with not just the planets, like an astrological um, heliocentric kind of thing would be um, as far as the Christed state goes, but a, a galactic and universal Christed state that does put you in um, connection with your self as source and expression, a unique expression of source and divinity and purity and, and divine love. That's the, that is the energy that's rewriting these realities into a harmony once more. So that's the purpose of them. It's like we hear about photonic light influxes and the photon belts and everything like that. But I, I asked specifically, and that's just part of my job in, in the higher realms, is to not just perceive that, but to open uh, certain gateways um, in order for those flows to do what they're supposed to do because they're tied to ancient structures they're tied to the crystalline core of gaia they're tied to human heart grid they're tied to the new earth grid system and the crystalline grid and other planets and it's really um it's really beautiful and it's very elegant to um not just receive that but to be part of that because it's not just one person going out and opening a gateway. This is, you know, your whole, your whole higher levels aligning with other beings to, to co-create that. So it's a complete honoring of free will. It's a complete honoring of all the different realms. It's just collectively humanity has made a decision to, to create that next level, co-create that next level. Gaia is already ascended since the 12-12-12, so she's already created that platform for that experience. So enough humans have woken up and go and said yes to that. So then you start uh, working with the, with the galactics and the, and the different alliances, masters, brotherhoods, and sisterhoods of light to fully support that because it's a, actually a past intention. We're just living out that timeline of, yay, you know what would be cool? Let's create this timeline of ascension. And then you 
you know, you get to the point on the timeline where you wake up and then you're like, oh, okay, let me play my part in this. You know, let me offer what I have as a skill set. Let me offer my heart. Let me offer my energy. Let me do all the inner work so that I can be the clearest conduit possible. Does that make sense? It certainly does. And I've just been having wonderful visions of these spiraling rainbow rays of light coming through the galactic center. And then these incredibly dedicated, committed, heart inspired beings directing those rays through these particular gateways and portals just with the power of their collective intention and i would imagine that these spiraling maybe that's just my vision but do you do you see it as spiraling rainbow rays coming through these gateways and having something to do with dna sort of the double helix of the rainbow right yeah, ex exactly because it is reflected in our own dna our dna is creating the whole experience i mean when you get into crystalline dna it's actually creating collective experiences as well as your own so it's all threaded through the dna and uh, and i actually saw like a big rainbow bridge that was a big uh, i was given this vision serapis bay came in and like just did something in my third eye and the next thing I know I'm seeing the rainbow bridge and it was, it was giant gold um, double helix strands of DNA, but all the, all the bars were yes. rainbow colored and yes. they were vibrating so quickly that it looked like feathers. I'm like, Oh, there's the feathered serpent that, you know, the back in the day you used to see it as like, you know, it looks like a, looks like a gold feathered serpent, but it was, uh, they were like, that's the rainbow bridge. It's actually a collective DNA activation that allows us to have the next level experience. So a lot of, a lot of those gateways, people are seeing that rainbow plasma light coming in mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. highly encoded to create that diamond, crystalline, golden, cosmic Christed state mm -hmm. of being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the light that everyone's threatening. And it's kind of interesting because just a couple days ago, there was a, a scientific paper that was released about, um, they were a little confused as to why these giant surges of energy larger than ever before have been coming through the galactic center. You know, and all the light workers are like, yes. <laughs> but it's just great to have grounded, well, I don't know if it's evidence, they're just like, huh. You know, um, but it's uh, it's interesting. To watch, you know, the the just the development of it, and then the papers get released, and what we've been talking about this whole time, and it's just kind of fun how it all unfolds. But yeah, there's these cosmic surges that come through galactic center, and um, and the gatekeepers are able to uh, to to filter and guide them through different star systems, and, and of course through Solaris, the solar gate, and into Gaia, oh, into the stargates that are already in place for the new Earth grid system. So it's, it's fascinating to watch and to feel it. And not only that, but this, this collective of beings, this uh, alliance that's in service to the Ascension, has, uh, has always provided like gateway dates and there's always been these like intense solar activities or geomagnetic storms or activations or like the earthquake thing that happened just last month. Mm -hmm. there's, there's always some kind of physical evidence for what we're experiencing in the etheric because everything starts in the etheric and then it gets physicalized so that we can have the experience. And it's really beautiful to be tracking and watching this over the over the decades because everything that used to be just um predictive now has a lot of backup for like oh why do you think that happened you know kind of thing so yeah it's fascinating and it has everything to do with the energy surging through the galactic center and the planetary and solar alignments mm-hmm yeah, yeah, they're actually, 
I guess um, science is a little befuddled at the moment for why the energy is shooting up so high. So, <laughs> like, yeah, what do you think is going on? But it's just kind of fun. You know, it's just kind of fun to have a little bit of science once in a while go, huh, that's unusual. And we're like, <laughs> oh, told you kind of thing. Huh. So it's, yeah, it's interesting. And not only that, but there's so many light workers in service that are in service to balancing those energies as they come in not just and receiving them through the physical vehicle. So the more DNA and crystalline DNA that rainbow bridge gets turned on, the more stuff in the planet gets turned on. It's like a collective choice. It's a collective embodiment. And we were told embodiment is going to change everything. And that started happening last year where people are actually merging their higher and lower self into a Christed embodiment state. And that, that too is this elegant, beautiful, unique expression, mm -hmm. but you feel it, the experience is kind of wild because you feel the higher self taking over the journey. You're just like hands off the wheel kind of thing. And it's, uh, and it gets, it gets fascinating. It's like what just happened to me in July with getting called off of Mount Shasta to be at the epicenter of the earthquakes, the, you know, the, the, the morning it happened. I was just like, wow. This is kind of, it, I mean, it was, it was an intense experience, but it's just like, wow, these, um, you know, our teams are, are incredibly accurate when things need to happen. Um, you know, you get called, you answer the call. It was, it's really fascinating still to, um, to kind of be in that experience, but I really feel like the higher self when the higher self takes over the journey, um, it's not that you don't have choice. You still have free will choice, but why would I go against, you know, if the brotherhood showing up, why would you go against that? It's like, Oh, some, obviously something's happening. So if you're in service and if you're attuned to that and, uh, and you can keep all of your ascension path on track, um, some, some really beautiful things can unfold. I really appreciate what you're saying about your higher self taking over and transforming into your Christed self. I personally agree with that we have free will choice, but when your higher self is guiding you, why would you choose any differently? And when you're able to really tune in to the energies of the higher self calling you to do this and do that. It's, I find it's like waking up and engaging in this dance. It's almost like this symphony and you're just following the energies as I, you know, flow into my office and I do some things in there on that computer, then I flow into the library and choose a specific book and then I flow outside and I do a meditation in the sun and then I flow back in and I, you know what I mean? It's just like, I've just, ever since mm, maybe 2012, uh, when I started writing my first book, I just found myself following the energy and it occurred to me that I was doing this dance. It was very uh, much in the flow of divine synchronicity. Yes. Um, and then what you're saying about transforming into the Christed self I have recently felt as if there is a profound transformation going on within my being, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And I take long walks out in nature because I really feel this profound sense of oneness with the creation out in nature. And especially with in line of the divine portal of the sun you know and really receiving those high frequency rays that are coming through the sun and as i do that i literally can feel the transformation of my being 
and I notice it in how I feel physically, how I respond emotionally, my mental stimulus, everything just up levels, up levels, up levels. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And that, that solar connection. So, so gatekeepers are working with the sun all the time as well as other, uh, other stars. But I, I found that too, especially during um, the time on Shasta, just because you're at elevation. I did a lot of lone camping in the woods to really get into what exactly was going on with my beingness and what exactly was going on with Shasta and doing a lot of discovery and a lot of um, transformation up there. But that connection, I was like, wow, this, um, you know, we're able to request codes. There's a part of us that's actually part of the sun. You know, we actually store information there and you can actually download information into your DNA to activate the crystalline structure and that state of consciousness that comes with it. So we're consistently working with those solar codes and the stuff coming in because that's your portal that's bringing into the whole solar system. So I understand like how profound that can be when you have that connection, you know, because you become, you, you merge with the cosmos again. And it's been, I, I feel like the reason why it feels so profound is because it's been a while. You know, it's probably been quite a few incarnations since we've had that experience. So, but it feels like remembering that state of consciousness at the same time it's new. You know, there's, there's something very timeless about it where you're like rediscovering, oh yeah, that feeling, that sensation, that, that kind of a, uh, romantic melancholia almost of the of the mastery state i'm like i'm exploring that right now just because my my master strands of dna are, are kicking on and and uh it's it's really beautiful because as someone who's kind of walked and interacted with the masters for so long um i i always just admired how they were able to to interact and be so divinely neutral about everything that was going on and still um, be fun and and direct <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and just parent me through this process and and now that that stage of my journey is starting to kick on I, your, your perspective just becomes like so um it's just this beautiful natural state and like you say there's a, there's so much flow um, and you also feel like you cannot create distortion any longer, which is gorgeous, just gorgeous. Like it does not cross your mind to do anything that would create a uh, disharmony, you know, at, at all. Like everything is your, your words and your thoughts and your deeds and your emotions, like everything is kind of kept in, um, kept in alignment with that, that master state. And, and I, that's, that's probably the biggest thing that I notice in my personal journey. I'm like, wow, that old part of me is gone, gone. Like it, it, it just, and it will not come back ever. <laughs> Thank goodness. I'm just like, okay, I guess this is where we are now. So, and it's lovely. I mean, it's lovely to explore, but it's also a very, I mean, we were told it's a radically different state of consciousness. You're not going to feel like old you, nor are you going to have the desire to feel like old you uh, ever again. You know, it's going to be different. It's going to be a radically different state of consciousness. And the more that we can get comfortable with that, and like you said, kind of flow with it, uh, the easier it will be to go into that full state of embodiment. You know, at some point, you just surrender everything, you know, and that doesn't mean giving up your job and giving up your belongings. We're talking about just surrendering to the highest trajectory and the highest level of service that you are here to provide for the Ascension and for the collective, you know, because ultimately it is all about service. 
It's the only reason why the star seeds are here at this point is to be of service. And when you align with that, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters but service. And you just, you figure it out. You know, people ask me that a lot. They're like, how can you camp in the woods and run like, classes and everything like that i'm like it just everything everything's cool you know it just works out it just works out it's you have to allow room for the miraculous <laughs> in this journey and it's just like wow if you tried to figure it out with a linear mind my life would look crazy you're like what are, what are you doing I'm just like <laughs> hands off my journey <laughs> i'm doing what i'm here period <laughs> yeah absolutely it is beautiful and the way that you have expressed it all is incredibly divine and i just resonate so profoundly with what you're saying i have shared that recently i had i had shingles on the whole left side of my face i had shingles in my eye I literally had blisters on my eyeball and my eye was swollen shut and this I still have sensations in my eye and this is like eight months later but this you know was really acute for about three months and of course what I do is edit videos and write books and host events I couldn't do any of it you know if I had broken my leg I would have drugged my leg around right and done all of that but this you know, spirit afflicted me with something that I absolutely had to shut down I couldn't work at all <laughs> all I could do was lay in bed or sit in a chair with my eyes closed and listen to audio books or language of light music or just turn everything off and sit in complete stillness of course I was in excruciating pain through much of this fortunately I discovered 1200 milligram CBD but um, this journey through this suffering if you will um, really brought me into mastery on so many levels. I mean, clearly I'm a work in progress, but I really felt like it put me on that mastery trajectory. I listened to Paul Selig's Mastery Trilogy. And as I did, I became more calm, more centered, more confident. I began to flow rather than push prior to the shingles i would have like five computers going and one is social media and one is uploading videos and another one's editing them and another one's emailing and you know it's kind of crazy people would come visit me and i'd be like running from this room to that room whatever the deadlines oh my god i gotta do this you know and they'd be like wow <laughs> and after the shingles i was just stunned kind of like you know I am moving with ease and grace now mm -hmm. you know would a spiritual master run around frantically like that no mm -hmm. and you wouldn't push things this has to happen by this day you know what I mean because you know what I found I was working so hard but and felt like I was getting a lot done, but I wasn't really getting the results and things weren't really popping and manifesting. Right. And right. when I just moved with ease and grace, really into divine synchronicity, right? All the people and the places and things just started right. to appear and things yeah are really manifesting now although i have a little sense of guilt that i'm not getting as much done because i'm allowing the nature walks i'm allowing the meditations but isn't that more important though <laughs> isn't that more important than you know my long list you know at the at the end <laughs> here's a long list of all this stuff i did Oh, what you do, you know, for the personal journey. It's like, well, <laughs> you know, yeah, I love that. I love how, how direct 
uh, our higher levels can be sometimes, you know, they just collapse everything, especially with timeline shifts um, is, is how, pe how people can keep up with the timeline shifts because we've had three collective timeline shifts just in the last few months. And a lot of people are watching their journey fall apart or things like, like the shingles thing is, uh, is happening so that you keep up with the collective higher timeline. You know, there's a resonation there. You know, higher timeline is not something that you work, you know, crazy busy energizer bunny kind of thing, and you, it's not the vibration of the, of the Christed timeline. So a lot of people are just getting like stuff's falling apart. They can't manifest. Where's my business? Where's this? Where's that? It's like you're getting the the wake up call from the higher timeline, um, which is which is beautiful because it is a collective thing. So if people are watching their journeys fall apart, good job. You know, it means that the higher levels are telling you directly that things need to change in order for you to keep up with the energy because we just hit the 2020 timelines and it's, and we hit those in June and all of a sudden that energy, because time is collapsing, time is, is getting more condensed through here as we hit uh, more, more and more zero points. Mm -hmm. So we're feeling 2020 already, and it was like six months ahead of time. So that timeline energy, again, it works kind of like a stargate, but that energy is already mixing up people's journeys and getting them aligned so that when the kind of trigger point at the end of December with that eclipse that's right after Christmas does what it's supposed to do, everybody who's vibing with that higher timeline is already on it. So it, it needs like, it needed um, spiritual weight, <laughs> you know, it needed resonation. So a lot of hearts are getting called, you know, hearing the clarion call of like, hey, you know, you gotta stop doing what you were doing because now you're just on the hamster wheel. So you need to, you know, get, get up with the higher timeline, which is creativity and flow and ease and grace and this much lighter state of beingness so that the higher self can come in and, and step forward and play. And when you're not allowing that because your busyness or doing what you felt like, maybe that was your service, but maybe it's not your highest expression of service. Maybe there's something else. You know, all of us, changing everything radically radically just to just because the higher realm said let's go so it's beautiful to to watch it but that that's the thing i'm going to talk about at uh, at the conference is how to identify your highest timeline expression you know giving people just a lot of tools and a little um a kind of grounded understanding of how timelines work so that they can kind of grok what it is they're going after and then give them the tools to to really accelerate their journey into the new light into those new light dynamics which are again you know embodiment is a radically different state of consciousness it's beautiful but it's also it can scare people you know a lot of people are like I, I feel like an altered state of consciousness and I don't know what to do with it because they're trying to fit this big thing into the old box and it doesn't work. You know, it just, you can't go backwards with those timelines. You know, it's like, a, it's a jump. It's definitely a timeline jump. So yeah, I'm going to try to support everyone as much as I can <laughs> with the time that I have with some really strong tools and how to rewrite your narrative so that you get a through line and you're not doing anything um, that would cause any kind of like mental or emotional duress by trying to get rid of the old self and go into a completely different state of consciousness. It has to be a merge. It has to be a blend. You pay forward what is applicable in your journey. You're not abandoning, you know, I'm not abandoning Sandra Walter altogether. She's evolving into something else. And I'm very aware of that. So I'm like, okay, you know, and it's, it feels odd sometimes to define yourself, you know, the titles that we put on our work or whatever. That's just, that's just what serves now. Cause people are like, what do you do? You know, and you have to, you have to have an answer for now. 
so that people can go, oh, I kind of understand what's going on. But we're abandoning that too as we go into this new light dynamic. And that's all about creativity. So if we can guide people to really embrace that highest expression of creativity and that kind of Lemurian flow that's coming in right now, a lot of strong aloha energy <laughs> coming forth with the inner earth grid systems, uh, which, which just happened a couple months ago, this merging the grid systems and all of that stuff, Lemuria technically our past, you know, that past self merging with the future self and the zero point of the present. So it's bringing, it's bringing a lot of energy that might feel familiar, kind of like, oh, you know, it's kind of that Essianic thing of like reminding yourself of something that you thought maybe you lost. So there's a familiarity to it, like, oh, I really got my heart back, or I got my creativity back, or oh, I used to play with that when I was younger, or last year, or 10 years ago. What happened to that? I really enjoyed that. And all of a sudden you're playing with things that pay it forward, you know, that pay forward that creativity, which is quite lovely. Absolutely. And you were mentioning that uh, time is going to speed up until we just run out of time and come to this zero point. Yeah. Is, well, yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, there's, well, the, the time constructs are based on our, our emotion, memory. You know, technically it's not time at all. It's like the only reason why it feels like time is because we have collective agreements to keep remembering things or energizing things that happened in the past. So when grounded humans are very married to their old stories or repeating and looping in uh, past patterns or believing their own story or um, just can't, the mental levels just won't let go of, of a narrative, then you're actually creating density. You're creating uh, time. You're creating the experience of time. But as the photonic light comes in and all those structures get, get zapped, you know, get, get leveled up, that's why we go through so much emotional clearing and rewriting the neural pathways and the meditations and everything so that we can get into flow and let go of the denser negative emotional structures that keep us looping in those lower timeline loops. And, it, yeah, and you'll find with, uh, with the Ascension tribe and a lot of light workers, you can't remember what you did yesterday, let alone, you know, a couple of years ago. You know, it's just like, oh, I don't know, kind of now, now, now. And that now state allows different parts of your DNA to turn on. And it allows uh, the freedom of flowing from a timeline that's built on density to a timeline that's, that is that bridge. It's a bridge to a different state of consciousness. So even though it's called a timeline, technically it's just a bridge to another higher dimensional experience, higher density experience. So we're riding this, this we're migrating our realities through this Christed timeline to, uh, to a different experience. So your experience of time gets very loose, you know, becomes more lucid, more dreamlike. We used to only experience 4D and dream state. So this, we're technically, we're already in it. That 4D state gives you that kind of lucid experience and then we kind of move into the five or honestly, whatever number you want to put on it. What we're talking about is that Christed higher state of new earth consciousness where it is, in the now, it's in the flow, stories don't stick, personal narratives don't stick, denser emotions don't stick, no more fear, it's all based on love. So you don't have all that entanglement with emotion and judgment and self-judgment and, and all those dynamics that keep a consciousness in that established reality, that collective reality. So we're completely changing the reality through this work you know through this work that we're we're doing you can ask any light worker 
how, you know, what about memory? And they're just like, I just don't feel it. Or they can remember something, but there's no emotional charge there anymore because they've done their clearing work. So they can remember if there was something traumatic or dramatic that happened, they can revisit it as like, oh yeah, that thing happened to my lower self, but there's no charge. Yeah. Now, there's no uh, a magnetic to it at all because that denser magnetic is what keeps those Taurus fields, those timelines locked in place. Does that make and sense? It does. And so as all of that dissolves, and sort of transmutes into a higher light, maybe a lighter molecular state, then, and time speeds up, does it come to a point, and you mentioned the eclipse uh, around the end of December, uh, how do those two relate? Well, the December eclipse is like, any of our major gateways, it provides a whole new level of light for us to move into. And collectively, when we make choices, like anybody who's working with like the gatekeepers and the grid workers and everything, we tend to feel that first, just because we're turning on our DNA's capability to have that experience, you know, because it all comes through the DNA. So when you're turning on your heart in order to create coherence for your, your DNA to activate and receive that, then you become the new template, the new platform for people to jump onto. So that's what's happening in, in December that we're already starting to experience. Like this month alone in August, when we're talking now, uh, there's, you know, these magnetic shifts are happening already. It's, and it has to do with the grid system. So the grids, start the new earth grids, not the classic ley lines, the new earth grid system that's been established by all of the, all the light workers has a different vibration to it. But when the, when the influxes come in and there's this pure light and pure codes for the DNA, it starts vibrating faster. And because you're connected to it, and because you're standing on the planet, <laughs> having that experience, if, if your DNA is open and your heart is open, you start to feel it. So we're feeling it already. And it doesn't, there's, I, I don't feel, um, it, even though there's a timeline division going on, it might get a little wider in December. It's certainly not any kind of, um, you know, final event or whatever. I don't subscribe to that at all. There's definitely um, things on the higher timeline where the, the sun uh, makes a, a brighter and broader display of the solar flashing activity that's already happening. It's already happening. You know, any of the gatekeepers will tell you, the sun's already doing that. I don't know how other, other people can't perceive that, but it's just, you. if you meditate with the sun, you'll, you'll see it or your whole ascension column will start lighting up because you're merging with what's actually happening with the sun and what's happening with Gaia. So it's already starting to, flicker and vibrate and that's been a couple of years you know we saw the sun just explode like <laughs> in january 2016 all the gatekeepers were like ah we hit that point in the timeline where it's gonna you know the sun's gonna go off and then we realized okay so we're all a bunch of precogs right so we just hit the the timeline the collective trigger point where that's definitely going to happen you know and and there will be passages where the sun is going to get extremely bright and start changing the dynamic in a much stronger way but it's nothing to wait for or or try to predict exactly what date or whatever because it's already happening so if you're not having that experience you just just catch up with the ascension crowd you know do your meditation start moving into unity get into your heart and you'll start feeling it you know, because that's that's our birthright, is to feel what's happening with the planet, what's happening with the solar system, what's happening with the galaxy. You know, especially as star seeds, if you've got star codes in your DNA, you start feeling other parts of the universe. I mean, it's it's wild, it's really wild. And the as above, so below, as within, so without becomes so 
clear, like, wow, I'm really getting reintegrated with the fabric of the cosmos and God, you know, your, your God self, your source self. And it's quite beautiful. And, and I highly recommend that people not be afraid of that because sometimes, you know, it does take balance because you get ex extremely expanded and then you got to come back right? Because you're walking around in body. So you've got to, you've got to come back, integrate the code, stick it easy, then go out again, you know, and keep it natural and organic. I highly recommend don't use any kind of substances trying to get there or whatever. Um, you know, trust your, your brothers and sisters that are going through this in the natural, organic, substance-free way. Everything you're seeing on drugs you see in your meditations, you know, without the drugs. <laughs> so, you know, the substance-free thing, it, I feel like that's probably the highest choice. A lot of people who are dealing with a lot of trauma or drama, you know, it might be beneficial for them to use ayahuasca or something like that to get over it, but don't get addicted to it. You know, don't get addicted to using that as your way to experience higher consciousness. It's not needed. It's just not needed. Yes, I've always thought that as well. And clearly DMT is released during meditations. That's scientifically proven. So I've always said that myself. You can go deep into meditation. You can even take meditative walks out in nature and just become very present in the eternal now moment. And you will experience yourself sort of a moment where you almost feel like an explosion of light within your being and then you start to experience the reality in a different way almost in a higher way where you know for myself also it'll look like it's raining sparkling light and everything becomes ultra fluorescent and i feel telepathic communication with the birds and the plants and i know i've shifted and i'm having that experience and it's mm -hmm. simply because I went deep into a state of, mm -hmm. I, I will put my hand on my heart. And that brings me into the eternal now moment. It brings me very present. And I feel like when you're very present in the now, that opens a gate and it's your heart. It opens this portal into eternity, into that place where... Mm -hmm you can experience higher dimensional awareness, really. Yeah, and for anybody who's desiring that experience, there is so much information and teachings on how to open that up within you. There's so much you can do that is natural and organic. There's so, I mean, every, all the mastery practices that have been around for thousands of years work. They actually work. You know, they're there for a reason. So those, you know, if you want to be somebody who's receiving those activations or seeing the stargates, my God, I mean, it's, it is, it's trippy. It's definitely a trippy thing to, to witness that and, you know, go through wormholes and stargates and, and all that stuff to like, get connected with this, especially when you're gatekeeping, my God, um, and some of the activations that the masters provide when you are willing to, to be in service and to be in your heart, um, they, they can provide that for you. And it's, it's you know, again, huge blasts of DMT visions and you're seeing all kinds of things. And then of course, having um, the discernment to uh, kind of decipher what am I looking at and why and how applicable is it to my journey or is my brain just tripping out because I've got all this light registering on my optic nerve and my God, you see like all kinds of things, you know? So it's, um, there's definitely some discernment <laughs> to be applied with that level of DMT, but it's, um, but it is, it, it is beautiful. And for anybody who, uh, wants to explore that you know the intel is there the tools are there there's so many classes and wonderful teachers at this point um, teaching ascension path like I do um, to to really boost your 
process, you know, but it's your personal, it's a personal choice. You know, we make that choice, especially with the timeline thing. Choices in the moment are so important right now as far as your resonation and what you, how you want your journey to unfold. You know, I'm kind of reminding people um, to, to use the choice in the moment of uh, whether you're going to do you know, more of the same or something new or explore something new or keep repeating old habits or addictions or whatever. It's like, is it worth your ascension to keep doing that old thing? You know, just like if you had to bet, <laughs> if you had to lay your cards down right now, is it worth it? Really? Is it worth it? And and if, you're, if your heart is like, do I really want ascension in this incarnation? I really want to have that experience. Um, then, you, you know, you're consistently making those choices of like, okay, what's the highest, brightest thing I can do in this now moment? You know, what is, what is the thing that my body needs, that my consciousness needs? that uh, my service needs, you know, do I need to go out and volunteer? Do I need to go out and express love? Do I need to draw? Do I need to paint? Do I need to sing? Do I need to meditate? Do I need to do yoga? Do I need to just sit my butt down on Gaia and connect with her? You know, a lot of people haven't done that. You know, it's, it's like, put, your, put yourself out in the woods, you know, take the, the forest bath, <laughs> the bath and go do the forest bathing and really connect with the, the natural part of yourself because Gaia is opening the living library, which unlocks the living library of your DNA. And that's the key. You know, she's just like, turn it on. Like you are free. That's the freedom codes that we have coming in since July 4th. It's like you are free now to make higher choices, to express in a brand new way, to get on the 2020 timeline that's all about creativity and the new earth lifestyle. You know, so that's, and that's co-creation. You can't just hang out in your cave anymore. Um, it's, uh, it, and it's beautiful. That's the other thing is really having the trends formation of gratitude itself that collective we we got there and if anybody's having trouble with their journey my goodness there's so many people out there who can uh assist you but you also have to take full responsibility for your own path and full responsibility for your own journey and say okay i'm gonna figure this out now today Thank you for so much inspiration and empowerment and hope and faith. And I love how you say it's happening. Alan Steinfeld in an interview once said, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. <laughs> and ever since, I'll say that to people. I mean, when you get the, when you get the big perspective, I mean, you're looking at you know, prophets who were here a couple thousand years ago talking about this, and they had the same language, like, it's here, it's now, the kingdom of God is here, it's now, it's within you, it's the whole ascension thing is happening now, and even though it might have been 2,000 years ago, and we're still saying the same thing, it's now, it's now, <laughs> now, it's like, we're the same, we're the same beings, you know, saying, it, look, you know, this whole thing can flip. We can flip the whole reality um, just by collective agreement and participation. So that's that's the thing that's that's really becoming extremely clear. Like I lead Sunday global Sunday unity meditations for three years now. So there's four four activations, four times that we get together every Sunday, no matter what. And that's been going on consistently because we were, we were told consistently practice offline, attuning yourself with your brothers and sisters with the collective intent of ascension, peace, harmony, and infusing the grids and opening your hearts and feeling each other. And here it is three years later and we can see each other during these meditations. Like people are describing what you're wearing, you know, I'm like, Wow, I got to get dressed for <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> this is incredible. You know, it's like wonderful. 
and uh, and people are visiting each other and people are having activations together and people are seeing the same visions and it's amplifying people because when you meditate with other people you always get a bigger experience always always stronger when you do it with other people and after three years of consistent practice and infusing the gurus and if you there's a huge field now of this this unity meditation field that anytime you meditate no matter what day it is you can actually tap into it and it's supporting so that's that exists in zero point now so ah. it's just it's and it's beautiful because people are tapping into it. They're like, oh, I plugged in on Monday or Wednesday or whatever. And I felt everybody. It's like, yeah, because we've imprinted the field. We've created that. So it's also teaching us not just telepathic communication and an amplification of the visions and collective visions, but also our ability as, as collective co-creators of realities, which is the whole divine purpose of the divine human is to get into the Christed state and then be able to, to be in that creator state, to create realities. Yes. And we've, you know, for a long time, we've been kind of duped into creating things that we really don't want. And as you come out of that, you know, your, your conference, you're talking about transcending the matrix. So it's like you you come out of those old structures and then you realize, oh, we can co-create whatever we want. Why don't we co-create new earth now? And when you get into that and you practice it together, incredible things happen for our journeys, for our hearts. And you start getting it. You start feeling that collective co-creation. And that's the fun thing to play with because then when we have collective intentions, like on the Lion's Gate, we did a unity meditation, and granted that's a Thursday, but uh, it was so strong. We're like, let's just focus on the diamond codes. And it was just, you could, you could feel it all through your consciousness, through the grids, through Gaia, and people who weren't even on the meditation were like, wow, what just happened? You know? So we're really kind of training ourselves how to use this collective co-creative power in a very positive, beautiful way to fully support the migration of realities from the old reality to this, this new reality that's been created by Gaia. You know, she did it. She had our support, but it was her intention the whole time to go into this more star-like quality of, uh, of a planetary expression, which is gorgeous because the crystalline structures start activating in your in your body and you start feeling very clear very crystally no it's just a different vibration and to and watch, it, you watch it work transform like wow yes yes i feel that and that's what I say when I do my solar ode to the sun and communicate with the solar logos and the solar lords and goddesses. I say, transform my being into a crystalline light being. <laughs> and I really feel it. I do. I feel light exploding within my being. It's like it starts in my head. And I imagine my entire head filled with this white golden light. But then it's like liquid light that starts yeah. to flow from my brain, which of course would be the source of the central nervous system. And it, I just imagine like liquid gold encoded light coming from the sun through my crown, filling my head and then pouring down my neck and into my heart and down my arms and you know, and, and so since, and then down into the inner earth and the ley lines of the earth into the heart of mother Gaia. But since this experience has been so powerful and transformational for myself, I will guide that sort of meditation um, for others and just, you know, have them close their eyes and visualize they're out in nature and it's safe to look at the sun in this space and allow this liquid love light to flow from source through your being. And as it does, it activates these sparks in every cell of your being, which is turning on the dormant DNA. I it is. 
It is. Yeah. And that's, that's a very palpable experience for people who are, are consciously, again, like you said, I mean, it's the keys, you know, some mastery keys, visualization, intention, open your heart and, and walk yourself through it, walk yourself through the activations. And, and even though it's, and it's beautiful to guide others to, to do that, to self activate, because it does have to be something that, um, that you do yourself. You know, you're not going to walk into the presence of a master and go, you know, hit me, <laughs> give me the good stuff. You know, it's like, they will always say, okay, here's what you do. Um, and, and they describe it as liquid light, you know, Germaine and Sinan, the Sananda realms have always described it as like a liquid light feeling but to feel that, to feel like liquid gold running through your veins is like such a palpable experience. And then to, to feel the crystalline structures come on and it feels like, you know, your skin is like pop rocks, <laughs> you know, just like. It, it feels like being mildly electrocuted, you know, it's just like, whoa. And it, it, cause it's a different frequency, you know? So as the body is transforming from carbon to carbon silica, and then eventually um, to silica with, with the light body stage, but it's, as it's transforming, I, I still find it extremely fascinating that we're experiencing evolution in just one lifetime, you know, a radical evolution of the physical in just one lifetime you know those of us who have sparkly skin and everything you're watching your skin become crystalline you're watching the crystals come out of your skin it's just like I, you know you you couldn't even fathom this a couple uh, you know just a few decades ago and now here we are at that stage we're like oh my gosh like this is <laughs> this is quite real <laughs> you know this is this is everything we were promised and more and when you when the when the DNA strands start um, kicking on, you you feel that merge of the higher and lower self. You feel that merge with the light body self, and that is that that rainbow body, crystalline light body coming on. It's not, and, and when we say rainbow body, it's not the classic Roy G. Biv. It's a whole different octave, like that rainbow plasma. It's a much more pastel. Uh, colors with the with the golden and the diamond um, resonation, and it's it's more almost like a feeling rather than this grounded kind of Crayola <laughs> classic seven yes, chakra. Yes. Completely gone, you know that old system just gone, and it gets overwritten by oh you're leveling up. So here we here you have these lighter colors, these lighter sensations, these. Um, star aspects coming in you know it's like how would you describe that color it's like well it's very syrian like you can't even describe the color you know it's like a frequency of a star <laughs> it's quite it's quite beautiful but uh, but for the time being you know a lot of us are describing it as like this pastel rainbow uh plasma diamond definitely has gold in it um and again, very crystalline, like kind of rainbow you would see in a crystal. It was very pale and light and much lighter than the old, uh, than the old system. Mm, so beautifully expressed. And thank you for spending so much time with me today to talk about all of this, Sandra. Mm. So much of what you have said is such validation such validation about what myself and so many of our friends in the spiritual community are experiencing. Thank you for talking about the spiraling DNA because I had a vision that those lines in between there were like rainbow rays, but they represented yes. dimensions of beingness. And then I hadn't seen though that the that the spiraling arms would be this golden light. So thank you for that. And it's almost like, well, of course it's golden light. And the and the pastel colors, because it was like, well, they're vibrating at a higher frequency now. 
right? So of course they're lighter, like red becomes pink and, you know, green mm -hmm. becomes aqua and orange becomes peach. It's like, yeah, because they're vibrating at a higher frequency and it's just so remarkable. Microcosm, macrocosm, right? And if this is happening in these spiraling DNA helixes in the cosmos, it's happening within our being if we can open to receive that. Yeah, exactly. And the, I mean, the DNA conversation is, that's a whole other conversation, but it's, that's fascinating to me. And I'm really digging into that um, crystalline DNA because a lot of times when people say 12 strand DNA or 144 strand DNA, people are picturing actual strands and it, it's, it's quite different. It's more like realms or layers of, uh, of DNA. You know, it doesn't like the, the two strand thing and that's what anchors you into a, a physical form. But as the as the other strands or layers come on, they express different aspects of your beingness and different aspects of the the crystalline Christed unity consciousness state. And I find it really fascinating that they they all um, kind of complement each other like layers like a like a torus field would be Oh, layers within layers. okay. Layers within thing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, this is really beautiful. And then when you get into like the universal, the 144, it's, um, you know, that's your, your connection to source consciousness. Mm -hmm. So you become that multiverse uh, expression, you know, where you have, and it's all about access. Mm -hmm. and, and that access, mm -hmm. of course, comes through the activated heart center which is just the key to unlocking all of this. So everything you've ever heard preached about divine love and getting into your heart and unconditional love and non-judgment, it's true. It's true, people. So pursue that with all of your might because it is the key to, uh, to activating and holding, holding those strands on, holding those layers on, you know, maintaining that level of consciousness. And then the, the lower stuff, um, starts it's quantum so the when the higher vibrational strands start turning on then the lower vibrational stuff starts fading out of reality so ah, that's uh -huh. transformation you know the transformation mm -hmm. is just like it's just like density structures you know 40 5d 90 all that stuff it's all kind of built the same way so there is this this elegant um way of designing how all this fits together how galaxies fit within the universe how the multiverse fits within god you know, it's just you become a reflection of all that and it's all encoded through the dna it's just how are you how much of you are you capable of turning on and holding you know holding that state of consciousness and the only way to hold that state of consciousness is to is to walk the ascension path and really engage with um with the the clearing and the activation and the choices and the and the service to others and the self care and the self love and all the things that that everyone's been talking about are absolutely valid and applicable to DNA activation and DNA resonation. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the time that you took today, Sandra, sharing such incredibly profound wisdom and activating us all with your beautiful radiant light. <laughs> oh, yeah. My heart. Thank you so much. It's been an honor and a pleasure, sister. Thank you. <laughs>